Homework 12, Picturing Data, Video 2. Bar graphs. These are so easy, it's almost insulting. A bar graph is a graph that shows bars to represent frequencies. For example, we're going to draw a bar graph of this distribution. Some people were asked what type of pet they owned, or what their favorite type of pet was. This is not very clear, so we should probably clarify it. We'll say favorite type of pet. And our four categories are dog, cat, fish, and other. It's not uncommon to have an other category to pick up the people that have unique answers like lizard or sugar glider or hedgehog. And of course we have the number of owners which corresponds to the frequencies. Nine people said dog, 10 people said cat, five people said fish, six people said other. There's two types of bar graphs. There's a vertical bar graph and a horizontal bar graph. I think the ones in the homework are mostly vertical bar graphs, although it would be easy to rotate it and make it a horizontal bar graph. The trick to a good picture is to make sure that it conveys as much information as possible and needs a little explaining. So for example, on the horizontal axis, we're going to represent all the different answers people gave. Dog, <coughs> cat, fish, and other. Now, it's important to describe what the question was because otherwise it's up to your imagination. Are these your favorite kind of pet? Is this the first kind of pet you had? Is this your favorite type of animal to eat? Sorry, PETA folks, it just popped into my head that there are parts in the world where all of these animals are delicacies. So it's important to label your axis, in this case, favorite type of pet. And on the vertical axis, you're going to number it. Now this one goes up to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, nine, 10. So 1 through 10. It's not necessary to number all of them. Actually, it's only necessary to number the first one because that defines the scale. But we'll go ahead and number all of them. And it's important to represent, to uh, label the vertical axis to say what these numbers represent. Now you can write something as generic as frequency or something as descriptive as number of owners. And then to draw the bar graph, you just raise a bar above each category, the correct height corresponding to the frequency. For example, nine people said dog. So we're gonna raise a bar up nine from dog. Now, in a bar graph or qualitative data, there is the stipulation that the bars don't touch. It's nitpicky. You really don't lose anything or gain anything if you accidentally make the bars touch, but it is a common characteristic of bar graphs. Bars shouldn't touch. Uh, 10 people said cat. And if you notice, I'm starting at the top because it's easier to, than going up and figuring out where to stop drawing. And then we're to stop drawing and I'll start at the top, stop when I hit the vertical, the horizontal axis. Five people said fish. Six people said other. Dang it, I know there's a yardstick in this room. It's driving me crazy. Mm -hmm. Well, can't seem to find it. Maybe I'll take it to another room. Maybe I dropped it on the floor. I don't know. But six people said other, so that's about here. That was noisy. I'm disappointed that I dropped it. Thought it was a little more ninja than that. This fish bar looks a little high. Oh yeah, that's too high. Now, of course, most of the time technology is used to draw these so that you can draw them a little bit more accurately. But if you're freehanding it, there's nothing wrong with using the straight edge. So that's all bar graph is. I, I don't know what else to say. You can make it pretty by shading them in. You could use different colors, et cetera, et cetera. But the trick to a good bar graph and a good picture describing data in general is to make sure that 
nothing is left to interpretation. Nothing can be misunderstood. Oh, they must have talked to some pet owners and asked them their favorite type of pet. Nine of them said dog, 10 said cat. Looks like five said fish, and sometimes you can have little dotted horizontal lines. If you have them, you usually have them for every number regardless, you know, like on graph paper, so that you don't have to guess how tall each bar is. I'm not gonna draw the rest of them. But this, this bar graph can live on its own and requires no explanation. Now, I'm gonna come around and take the phone off of my tripod and show you how you do this in the online homework. So give me one second. Walk around here. Got my computer set up right here. There's a reason it's facing this way. It has to do with cords and stuff. But in the homework, now this isn't the same context. This is a, uh, looks like different type of infections and number of students. <laughs> But in the homework, when you do a bar graph, there's one of two ways you can do it. On the, above each category, there is a box where you can type in a number. Like if we wanted this bar up 20, we could type 20 and press enter. Or, you see that finger? You can click and drag and raise the bar however high you want. So just make sure that it's giving you the finger <laughs> before you click and you can drag and lower it, then you can let go. Or again, you can just go into the uh, number above the category and type the frequency that you want. Hit enter and it'll draw the bar for you. So doing the bar graphs on the homework is really pretty easy. Um, it might be a little bit trickier if you're using a device that's touch screen, especially the click and drag, I don't know. Uh, this old computer doesn't, but surely you can figure it out. All right, so if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. And that's the uh, video on bar graphs.